Are you ready for homeschooling to feel joyful again? Do you want to build closer relationships, remove some of the stress around planning, and enjoy learning with your children? Welcome to Your Morning Basket. I'm Pam Barnhill, a homeschool mom just like you, and I'm going to show you the magic and fulfillment that Morning Basket or Morning Time can bring to your homeschool. Grab your coffee or tea and let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Your Morning Basket podcast. I am joined today by two members of the Your Morning Basket team, one of whom you are very familiar with if you've listened to very many podcasts, and another newer team member for the podcast. Meg, have you ever been on the Your Morning Basket podcast before? I have not. Okay, so introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are. Hi, I'm Meg. I'm a homeschooling mom of two middle schoolers in Southern Connecticut. And I am the operations manager, meaning I do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff for your running basket. So um, that would be why you haven't heard from me so much. Yes, you are behind the scenes. But you and I met, goodness, like eight years ago, maybe? Yep. I have been around kind of like first as a uh, purchaser of... Um, both plan your year, the original version and the original your morning basket, um, PDFs. And I've kind of just stuck around because morning time was transformation for transformational for our school. So, um, it's just been a good place for me and I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So our next team member on the podcast today is somebody you know very well, if you've listened very often, and that is Miss Dawn Garrett. Hey, Dawn, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. We are, we're started on our school year and things are moving apace and we are so, I just want to add a plug. We are so thankful for Meg because she keeps us all in line and we, she has done such a wonderful job and become such an invaluable part of the team. So I'm glad that she's getting a chance to share her voice today. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, everybody says, how do you do all of this? And well, Meg and Dawn, that's how I do all of this. So yeah, it's great to have uh, team members. Okay, Dawn, we know you have homeschooled three kids in the past, but what is going on in your life this year? Well, in July, I graduated my oldest and she's taking a gap year and working and she's doing theater stuff and she's having a great time so far. Um, and then I sent my now senior um, to community college for the year. So I am homeschooling one student in 2023, 2024. Um, she is a junior. And she and I are having the best time. I love juniors. Like they're Mm -hmm. not seniors yet. And Mm -hmm. I love, I love my senior, you know, Mm -hmm. she was fabulous, but there is something about when a kid gets to their last year that Mm -hmm. the senioritis hit. And honestly, I think for me last year, it hit as much for me as it did for her. Right. So I kind of had that senioritis, but junior year is when they kind of get a little bit serious. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think so. That's that's my been my experience now three times. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So and I'm seeing that with my junior, too, which is such a, a wonderful, awesome breeze. So, Meg, just <laughs> to let you know, in a few years, you'll have a junior and you'll be like, oh, this is so lovely. Why can't I always homeschool a junior? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> two years. <laughs> <yet. love> <laughs> Okay, well, speaking of what's going on this year in your homeschool, we're going to start kind of a new little segment on the Your Morning Basket podcast called Morning Time Musings. And I'm just going to kind of bring out a question uh, regularly. So I would like to know the first question. Question's going to vary every single time. But the first question is, What's working in your morning time right now? Now, I I know all of us recently went back to school. And so we're kind of like, just starting our school year. Meg, I think you've been going the longest of all of us, but um, what's working for you right now? Right now, I would say singing is working for us. And I wouldn't have said that last year um, with vocal changes and things going on over here. But this year, it's a nice, like gentle introduction to our morning time. And it's also been a nice break between some of our heavy readings. It gives our brains a chance to rest and 
think about something different before we shift into the next book. And it seems to be working really well right now. Okay. So question, do you sing more than once in your morning time? We do. We sing in the beginning, we sing the doxology, just opening everything up. And then we sing midway through, we take like a little song break, and it's usually a hymn or a folk song. Um, And it just gives us a chance to kind of have that little mental break in the middle. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, Dawn, what's working for you right now? In so, your morning? so if you've been around morning baskets for a long time, we get a lot of questions about having, how do you do morning time with one student? Oh my gosh. Morning time with one student, maybe because she's a junior is amazing. So we easy. get to, it's, it's, it's great. We chose a lot of books that are very, um, related to her interests and they're not necessarily related to each other but they're things that either I wanted her to have or things about she would like to be a homeschooling mom so I chose some things to do with her and we are having the best discussions just her and me doing morning time I love it so much I love it so much and yeah I okay so one of the things I'm this has nothing to do with morning time but I'll just say it anyway so my boys have decided they want to school four days a week this year. And so I've got one who's schooling Monday through Thursday and the other one is schooling Tuesday through Friday and Monday and Friday. We're not doing morning time, but those are still my favorite days. Because <laughs> it's so easy with just one kid because there's no bickering, you know? Um, and I know some moms struggle with this in morning time. Just know I struggle with this too, especially with two boys who are like close in age, but just far enough apart. You know, one of them's a junior, one of them's an eighth grader. And it's like, I get you on the bickering. It's Uh worth it to push through, totally worth it to push through. But the days that I've only got one of them, I'm like, oh, like the whole day just runs more smoothly. (laughs) So, And yet, and yet that... But that bickering is a great opportunity too. So it's something important yeah. to yeah. to work through as you're doing your morning time. So yeah, That's and Linda Sutherland talks a lot about that from um, Sibling Relationship Lab, where you know the bickering is where they learn that you can love somebody and disagree with them, and you know you may you may not always get along, and we need that so much in the world today that you can you know you can disagree with somebody and still love them, and so. Yep. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. Okay. I would say the thing that's working for us right now, we are so happy, so happy to have Carl Azus back. Yes. Um, Yes. He's doing the world from A to Z. Um, and it's like we missed him so much last year. It just left a hole in our morning time. And so now he's back and, um, We've been watching. The only problem is because we don't do morning time on Friday, I realized we're not getting any of the Fridays are awesome. <laughs> so, um, but we are watching Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and always getting um, just a good look at current events. And it always sparks a conversation. We uh, we have always done the news stuff before school starts. So it's like, Get up, read your Bible, we'll play the news, and then you'll get breakfast. It's a nice, slow, easy morning. And so my kids, even my graduate, even my college student are still watching Carl. It's wonderful to have him back. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right. Well, let's move into our main topic for today. And that is we wanted to talk about some of the misconceptions that we've heard, uh, misconceptions that people might have about morning time. And we we really wanted to address some of those because we hear a lot of them. <laughs> and I think the first thing that we wanted to start with is it has to happen in the morning because we hear what do you mean morning time? Like, I'm not a morning person. This, like, I can't do this. There's no way I could function that early in the morning. So what say you guys? We have pretty much always done morning time in the morning, but I don't think that you have to by any means. I think I know a lot of people who start in the afternoon, who start in the late morning. I think, um, I think it, does not have to be a morning thing at all. 
Yeah. What about you, Meg? Have you always done morning time in the morning? We, uh, we've had different seasons. So um, I wouldn't say that we've always done it in the morning. We mostly do it in the morning. We find that it's an easier way to kind of transition to our school day. But we've had a lot of seasons where we really needed to do it at different times. So we've had seasons where it happened at lunchtime and even times where we've done it at dinner with dad. So Mm -hmm. I definitely would say it does not have to happen in the morning. It can happen at any point in the day. It is about what suits your family. Yeah. There was a time a couple of years ago. So now we start our morning time much later than than Dawn does. We start our morning time at 10. What time do you start, Dawn? 30. 8.30? Yeah. And what time do you start, Meg? Right now, 9 o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay. So we have like an eight 30 and nine o'clock and then a 10. There was a time a couple of years ago where I was just dragging these big bodies out of bed in the morning and they were so, you know, hard to get out of bed. My daughter is not a morning person and, um, we were doing it at 11. So we were starting our morning time at 11 AM and it, you know, I think the most important thing is just to figure out not only what time works, what time works for your family as a whole, but then what time works for your other kids, because there's nothing that says like some of the kids can't get up and do other things first right. before morning time if they want to. Um, but, you know, Jessica Waldock is not a morning person. And uh-huh. she mentions like she uses morning time to her advantage because she's not a morning person. She has an only child. That only child is very full of energy and up earlier. Jessica's not ready to go yet. And she's like, this buys me time. You know, all I have to do is pull a book out of the basket and read while I'm drinking my coffee. You know, it buys me a little Mm -hmm. extra time to not be a morning person, to wake up slowly. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think you could definitely use that to your advantage. And then I I, know there have been some people who have changed the name of it because they didn't mm -hmm. like, or their kids didn't like calling it morning time if they weren't doing it in the morning. And it really doesn't matter what you call it either. No, I think um, Heather Tully has talked about, she had a season with a really hard toddler, like yes, a really, really hard toddler. And so they did morning time in the evening when dad could corral the toddler and um, and he was home from work and was able to do that. And that year, it just, that's when it made sense to do morning time, even though it was after dinner time. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it, I think it could definitely be done uh, anytime at all. All right. So Mm -hmm. what's another? Oh, I was just going to say, I had a time when we did it like while the youngest was napping. So I had like a kindergarten Mm. and we had a time when we had the youngest napping and that's when we did it. And then we've also had like my youngest is an early, early bird. So she gets up and does her math before morning time, before her brother's out of bed. Mm-hmm. We definitely take advantage of that pre pre morning time schoolwork. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, yeah. So and it's probably easier for her to do math without him around. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, OK, what's another thing that we hear that's a misconception about morning time? Um, I hear a lot that morning time is just memory work and we aren't doing memory work, so we don't need to do morning time. Um, but I think Meg has alluded to, they sing and they read a lot of books. Um, Pam talks about watching Carl Zeus in, uh, the world, on, the world from A to Z. Um, I, we're reading a lot of books. We do a little bit of memorization during our morning time, but it's just one of many different things that we have smushed together in our morning time. Um, and I think that that has that alternation of ideas, um, and, and things that you're studying and things that you're learning about. Um, and the, it's, it's that pulling together and making it a family affair that really is what sets morning time apart and makes it special and important. Um, and so don't, yes, a lot of people do a lot of memory work and we have traditionally done, we've done catechism and hymns and um, Bible and poetry. We've traditionally done a lot of um, memory work, but we don't all do all only memory work. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to make a confession. We're not doing any memory work at all this year. So I know it's crazy because we've done it for so many years, but the boys were just adamant, 
you know, and sometimes like it's like the years I spent doing Mad Libs just to keep the peace in morning time. And sometimes you do that. And so next year I'll ask again, hey, can we do some memory work? But for this year, we're just like going with the ages that they are. And and so we're not, you don't have to do any memory work at all. And you can still have a great morning time. We're still in our, like we've done morning time six times now. Um, since the beginning of the school year. And at the beginning of the school year, we always do a lot of review. But so we're still reviewing our Bible memory work when we're singing old hymns that we've learned. We haven't touched the catechism. We haven't touched the poetry. Um, We're reading poetry, but we haven't worked on any of the memorized poetry. And we may not do poetry this year for memory work, just read and enjoy other poets. So I, I think I think it can definitely be something that is adjusted year by year. Yeah. Yeah, oh, for absolutely. sure. All right. So I hear this one a lot and it's the idea that how can I add one more thing to my schedule? Mm-hmm. Like these are the extras and I don't have time for the extras, you know? So how do you fit this in when I have all of this other stuff to do? Well, I think some of it is that whole concept that morning time is family learning. So when you're learning together, like we incorporate things like our science and our history together. So then squishing in a little bit of art or, you know, a hymn study or, um, you know, just any of those other beautiful subjects that so easily slip through the the cracks, it's so much easier to incorporate because we're doing this learning together and it's a time saver. Yeah. So that would be my argument for morning time. I would love to talk about the word extras in in that statement because um, we were watching, oh, What's the Robin Williams movie where he's the teacher from the 80s? Dead Poet uh, Society. Dead Poet Society. And he's like, why do we read poetry, boys? You have to learn math. You have to learn English. But why the poetry? He says, because poetry is what we live for. It tells us about love and life and all of these things. And those are the things that we, st- the, the math, the written word, all those things are the things that we do to make a living. These are the things that we live for. And so if we aren't introducing the things that we live for, then the other stuff, it doesn't, it has less purpose, less meaning, in my opinion. So I don't love the term extras. I know in the Charlotte Mason world, we call them the riches. My favorite, though, is the leaven, um, where the leaven lightens and makes everything rise up. Um, And it, it... it expands the world, expands everything that you're doing in your homeschool. And so um, I know that Wendy K. Part actually coined both the riches and the leaven. I prefer talking about the leaven of morning. It actually makes doing the math lessons easier. It makes yeah. morning time, makes doing the phonics lesson easier. It makes all those, the science, the history Year because it just lightens the whole day. Yeah, and so and it also- I, I just wanted to like push back on that word extra. These aren't extras; they are what give meaning. Yeah, I love that so much, and they're also the things that keep mom from burning out. Because when people mm-hmm. say, "How do you homeschool for so many years?" I mean, think about Heather. How many years she's been homeschooling for twenty years now, mm-hmm. and has how many more to go? You know, her youngest mm-hmm. is six. And so (laughs) she has quite a few more to go, another 12 years. And so by the time it's all said and done, she's going to have homeschooled for over 30 years. And I think in order to do that without burning out, that's where morning time comes in um, for a lot of moms. Sarah McKenzie has a great line. It's like, Mike, I'm going to be in my homeschool the longest. Like all of my Uh kids are going to graduate and leave. I'm going to be here the longest. And that's why, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, I will still keep doing some of the things in morning time that I enjoy, like reading the poems. We may not be memorizing them, but we'll read them or, you know, uh, this little book of devotions or, um, you know, uh, right now we're using a little mate. It's a little book called Made for Greatness. And we're reading that aloud in our morning time. I'm getting as much out of it as the kids are. Mm -hmm. So 
that's the kind of stuff I'm going to keep on doing because that's the thing that keeps me from burning out as a homeschool mom. Absolutely. I think think too, like, you know, it's worth pointing out to our children as well as ourselves that all these beautiful things, they all point back to God and it helps us to make those connections with our other subjects throughout the day that all things point back to him. And so having that, having that lens to look through kind of helps us bring back, which I think ties in really like well with what Mm -hmm. um, Dawn was saying about the leaven is like, it's all about lightning and injecting life into, into our homeschool. And I just, I just want to go back to the efficiency thing that Meg touched upon. Mm -hmm. And this is so important. If you are homeschooling three, four, five children, and you're planning on putting everybody in a box with their grade number on it and juggle that many sciences and that many histories all at one time, you're doing something way harder than a morning time right there. Mm -hmm. And so it is such a good use of your time and energy to combine those kids. And we've got to get out of this idea that kids are going to miss out or they're going to miss something if, if we're trying to combine them together. Because you know, they're really not. They're going to learn so much from each other. They're going to take what they can. You're going to teach to the older kids. The younger kids Mm -hmm. are going to cycle back through. And, you know, this goes back to what Misty talks about when she says the math is the character lesson. Learning to sit through the science lesson that you're doing as a family is also a character lesson, Mm -hmm. you know? And so learning how to behave yourself, how to hold yourself together, how to be quiet while your mother reads aloud the history book, those kinds of things, that is a fabulous character lesson. And you don't have to go out and buy a character curriculum to get that. For sure. I'd love to talk about like the wide age ranges that you can come to in morning time where you're, you know, like, oh, I've got this fifth grader, fourth grader, third grader. This is perfect time for morning time. But by the time they're in high school, we can't do this anymore. They're just way too busy. They have all their, their uh, you know, they have to have all their credits for college. They have to have these things and another. And that is a big misconception too, because the things that you can do in morning time count toward the hours of those high school credits. So that's the first thing. and. Your morning time can mature with your students, um, Mm -hmm. even if you have younger students coming up behind. So one of the things that we're studying this year um, for our art study, we've done art study for years and years and years in our morning time. Um, But there's this painting, again, in Charlotte Mason Circles called The Great Recognition, which shows the Holy Spirit coming down on Pentecost um, on the upper room. And then it shows it going beyond and, and to Thomas Aquinas. And it shows all of these um, all of the learning, grammar, math, everything is from God. And so Rebecca and I are going to study that this year because she's an 11th grader and she can handle walking through that great big painting that has so many ideas because she has looked at Michelangelo and Monet and Van Gogh and Botticelli and all of these guys over the years. So the maturation that you can have in morning time, it it goes from beginning to end and to mom. I have oh, can't even tell you how much I've learned in morning time over 15 years now. Hi, friend. We all know the benefits of morning time, beauty and joy in our homeschool, plus a time to connect and create relationships with our kids. But homeschool burnout can happen. So how can we beat it? Your Morning Basket Plus takes all the planning out of your morning time so you can create space for engaging and starting your homeschool day on the right foot. With access to over 50 sets of morning time plans, live events, a community, and so much more, we walk right along with you in your homeschool journey. Join us at PamBarnhill.com or the link in the show notes and start creating a morning time you love today. So. Well, I think there's I think there's a fear that if I'm talking to my high schoolers, then the little kids are going to be left out and they're mm-hmm. going to miss something, you know. And I think what they gain from being there far outweighs 
things that they miss or things For that sure. you might perceive that they miss. And that doesn't mean you don't take the little ones aside at a different time of day and read them a picture book or something like that. But they are going to pick up and learn so much of what you're teaching to the other, to the older kids. Mm -hmm. And then if you are doing something that's a little much for the younger kids, then your older kids can learn patience. They can help you. They can do some of the reading aloud, you know, and uh, Sarah McKenzie often talks about nothing teaches you how to die to self more than taking care of some of your younger siblings. So once again, it goes back to that character education for both groups. And I think we have such a, a, a notion in our head that if we're not doing something specifically for one mm-hmm. person, that they're, we're cheating them in some way. Mm-hmm. But really the, you know, the value, there is value in sitting through something that's not specifically for you. It is for mm-hmm. somebody else. So my, my daughter was recently babysitting. So it's not directly morning time, but she was going through our picture books, things that she remembered from when I was reading them to her in morning time years and years ago. Oh, I want to take this one to, to go when I'm babysitting Sammy. Um, so, so even if you have that wide range, ask your older kids, what do you remember that we read in morning time? What should we make sure that little Jojo doesn't miss out on? Right. So they're a part of the planning. They're a part of the reading They're They are a part of um, building that family culture between your high schooler and your early elementary stu- school students. And I think that that's a wise use of time. And what yeah. a great way to build those oratory skills, mm. reading aloud, right? And so mm-hmm. if those older students are reading to the younger ones, they're getting that read aloud practice, they're practicing oration, and that is an important skill for moving forward. And mm-hmm. that is something I would totally count towards the, you know, like a public ski- speaking credit for mm-hmm. my high schooler. And that's that's the thing I think, you know, we... we th- Think about, let's start thinking about what we're doing in morning time and where can we take an estimate of those minutes and move them into a, you know, a credit hour tracker so that we can track those for our high school student. And Mm -hmm. last year I counted memory work. I counted the read alouds that we did. I counted the history separate from the literature. So all of that kinds of stuff can be counted. And I did end up giving Olivia a, a half credit in public speaking for various things that she had done. And if we had if I had had her read aloud in morning time, I would have counted those minutes towards that public speaking credit, mm-hmm. um, you know, practicing the oration with a uh, feeling that Meg was talking about. And I do think that that is one of those misconceptions about morning time, right? That it doesn't count for anything or it doesn't count for a specific subject. It does, in fact, count towards credits um, for high school. And so just because you're you're using that time for something that may not be a, you know, specifically math, you know, or, you know, specifically algebra one or specifically, you know, English one, it can be broken down into those English credits. And, you know, if you're including math in your morning time into those math credits and, and that time does go towards their, their credit hours. Right. It adds to it. Yeah. And you don't have to do that math in morning time or the public speaking in morning time every single day. Like, even if it's like 10 minutes, one day a week, that still adds up to something that you can add toward that math credit. Um, I know I loop a lot of things in morning time where on these days, you know, the ne- whatever the next day is, we do the next thing. We don't necessarily just do exactly the same thing every single day in morning time. Do you do that? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I do because my morning time is so simple, you know. Mm. Um, So we do pretty much do everything every day, but I'm tracking far fewer things in my morning time. And that's the beauty of it is, um, and and so maybe this is a misconception we need to address that you have to have this big long loop of all of these different subjects that you go through. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Sarah and I even did a podcast one time where she said, look, we do our memory work, we do our Bible reading, and we do one thing until we're done Mm -hmm. with it. And then Mm -hmm. 
we do something new. So she would do picture study every day. So it would take like a six week picture study and she would be done with it in a week and a half because she did it every day. And then she'd say, now we're going to do music for the next week. So, you know, don't, which kind of leads us to one of the other misconceptions about it being hard to prepare for. Um, It doesn't have to be, it can be simple. It can be one thing, you know, on top of a read aloud and, you know, memorizing a Bible verse or, you know, doing some prayer or something like that. It can be that simple. We definitely have done a lot of different iterations. When my kids were really little, it was sing, Bible, picture book, and one thing. And now we have a whole basket of things that I just kind of rotate through. I don't, my loop is not as big as Don's, but it's, you know, bigger than yours. But I literally just go into my basket, pull out a book and read the next chapter and then move on to the next thing. So, you know, I don't think it's very complicated um, because it's it's just kind of like whatever, whatever gets pulled out today is the book we read. Yeah. That morning time was always really pretty, has always been very complicated, maybe too complicated. I don't know. But it grew really organically. Oh, I want to do this, too. Oh can we flip this in? And so morning time can grow like that. And so it didn't seem complicated to me because I was just adding one thing at a time. And then it just made sense in my head. But it can be super easy. And what fits your family? My kids are 32 months apart, really close in age. We could do a lot together and get a lot of our day done in morning time. And so we did. Yeah. And, you know, there was the uh, a few years there where we did the history plans. And so we did have a lot of things going on in our morning mm-hmm. time when we were cycling through all of those history plans. And so it was very rich and varied and all of that stuff. And so I think for us, it just goes from year to year. And then also feeling out kind of the hormones I've got going on in the house and the, the you know, the those kinds of things. Uh, so I think, I think it can totally vary, which kind of brings us to this other misconception on our list that it must be a certain way. And I think, I think we've already started demonstrating this today that no, there is no prescribed fashion for morning time. And I even find that the people who are using our plans in the community still find 50 different ways to use the plans. Like for every person that's there, they have another way to use the plans that we've prepared for them to use. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think any there's any one person in the community who uses the resources the same way as one other person. I just don't. Yeah. It's, you see it's one variety is one morning time, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, And that makes me very proud of them that they're able to come in there and own that. I mean, I think sometimes we have people who come into the Your Morning Basket Plus membership and they're like, okay, show me where to start. Because that's the promise we make with the membership is like, it's your easy button, right? We've done all the preparation for you. We've chosen all of the things. So you don't have to do all of the research and you don't have to do all of that. So they kind of come in there with, okay, Please show me what to do first. And I think Lainey does a fabulous job with that. When she has their meeting with them, she sets them up and she like uh, shows them which one to do. Right now, we're all kind of doing fairy tales together and stuff like that. But I don't think anybody's there for very long before they're just like off and doing all of the things their own way. So that would be one of the biggest things I think I would stress to listeners is like, this t- yours is totally going to look different than somebody else's. And just mm. because we've pr- provided you the resource, it doesn't mean that you can't make it your own. Yeah. Like you can come in and use the parts that work for you and drop the parts that don't. And we recently had a, how do I plan a year meeting? And I think both Pam and Lainey said the one of the first things I do is cross off the things that we just are not going to do. Um, and, and that is perfectly Fine. You can totally choose not to do everything on anybody else's list. Yeah. So I can't tell you, we've done those spring 3.0 plans and we still have not touched Plutarch in our homeschool. I'm going to come do Plutarch. (laughs) So, okay. So let's talk about that. I do Plutarch. Sam has never done Plutarch. 
Meg, have you done any Plutarch? Are you planning? To I have a Plutarch that? book on my shelf that's getting ready to get pulled out. So okay. So what about Shakespeare? Do you have you both done Shakespeare in your morning time? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. But do you have to do Shakespeare in your morning time? No, you don't no. have to. Do <laughs> and it's oh, please, if your oldest is six, please don't, don't do Shakespeare in your morning time. <laughs> But you, I don't what know. My it? six-year-old really loved memorizing um, some of the lines from uh, my, oh, which one? Is Summer Night's Dream. Midsummer Shakespeare. Night's Dream. That yeah. one was yeah. super fun, yeah. and you know, so I can't, I can't entirely be like, oh, we never did Shakespeare at six, but we just read like the Lambs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but don't be trying to read the but, actual play. No, you know, don't right. read the whole play. It don't show them the movies, like. You know, but um, if you have anyway. high schoolers, do you have to do Shakespeare in your morning time? No, I'm you kidding. really don't. No, I don't know. You get but to. If, yes, you get if to. you <laughs> have a few high schoolers and you're like, you know, I'd like them to have a little Shakespeare before we graduate. Morning time is the perfect place to put that and count that time towards their high school credit. So I have a feeling that next year. Um, if we don't do it by the end of this year, we might do it by the end of this year because I haven't chosen all the literature selections we're going to do yet. Um, but I feel like John hasn't done Shakespeare since middle school. So we're going to do some Shakespeare mm-hmm. before it's all said and done. And it will get mm-hmm. done in morning time so Thomas can get it too. Okay. But you don't have to do Shakespeare. You do not have to do Gregorian chanting. We've sung hymns for years. I have never yet done a Gregorian chant in morning Ooh, time. I might want to, though. That sounds cool. <laughs> But you get to, you honestly get to pick and choose what needs, what your kids' needs are, what your, you and your children's interests are. And if Gregorian chant or Plutarch or Shakespeare or poetry aren't on your list, don't do them. Yeah, don't do them for sure. But it is also a good way to introduce your kids to things that, um, you know, here's the thing at our house. It's like, we're going to do this. You may not mm-hmm. like it, but we're going to mm-hmm. do it. We're going to do it at least once mm-hmm. to, because you never know until you try it. Right. That's so, right. Like and no that's kind of, bite. say uh-huh. that again. It's like the no thank you bite, right? Yes. When, like that, when they don't want to try, you know, the green bean casserole or whatever, you know, you say, okay, you take a no, no thank you bite and you give it a try and see, you know, Maybe uh-huh. you might like it, maybe you don't. Yeah. And I, I think it's true with subjects too. Like I have a kiddo that is not a fan of making art, loves to look at art, not a fan of making it, but we try enough types of art and like he's found some things that he doesn't mind so much. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's okay to try something for a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. And that and goes back to that character building. Yeah. Uh-huh. For yeah. sure. Morning time is a great place to like fit in those things that you're trying for a short period of time. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one other, one last one. What fantasy did you have? What mental fantasy did you have about morning time? We were going to sit on the couch in the front of the fireplace and everybody was going to have hot chocolate and I was going to read to them for hours and hours and they were just going to be so quiet and still and attentive and doing their handicraft. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's just start picking this apart from the beginning. So first of all, I live in Alabama in Southern (laughs) Alabama. So it's like we, it gets cold maybe three days a year, cold enough for a fire. And then the fact that if you light a fire in the fireplace, you can't go anywhere because you got to stay home until it burns out. And then the fact that like uh, everybody would be spilling the hot chocolate. Nobody sat still. Nobody wanted to listen for that long. I mean, there's just so many ways that this little fantasy. (laughs) Right. (laughs) There'd be no interruptions, you know. No fighting. No fighting. It'd be glorious. No picking. Right. No, no, no. Playing with each other's feet. I still have kids that roll around on the floor during morning time, you know, and they're not exactly little anymore. (laughs) I know, but they're still listening. So I guess that's when that's really what I wanted, right? Was that they were listening to the book. So, um, so maybe the fantasy is like some things have come true a little bit. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, and I will tell you, morning time did not work for us until I was willing to give up that fantasy, move our bottoms to the table and mm. make it look different than what it had appeared in my head. And then it started working. Then it worked for us. But it wasn't until I was willing to give up that fantasy that I was able to make it work. And well, like, and, and, you know, I, oh, go ahead, I, I know, Pam, you always started with lighting a candle and ended with putting a candle out. We never used a candle. Um, and that was just a, that would have been a disaster for my kids to have a candle burning on the table um, when they were small. That's just, you, you make your own rituals as, as you make this process. And we also had to be at a table because on a couch was just WrestleMania. Um, and so, so yes, sitting at a table, I famously had masking tape quadranting off my yes, table. You did. I, if you want to try that, I recommend using painter's tape, not masking tape, because it will ruin your table. But um, it is not, morning time is not a recipe for peace and light and joy. Um, it just, it's, it's real people really wrangling with ideas and really wrangling with each other. Yeah. And it's, and it's worth it. No, oh, you know, yeah. even though, even though, and I just, I want to get this visual. We may have to put a picture of this. I know we've got a picture on the, the website. We're going to have to find the picture to put into the show notes so people can see it. But Dawn did have a round table. It was probably what, about five foot round, maybe? Not quite that big. I don't think it was four. Yeah. 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 And, and she had a cross of tape from edge to mm-hmm. edge so that every person in her family had their own quadrant that they could not cross and this was because her children could not get along in morning time the tape was mine so like they could they didn't even get half of the piece of tape the tape was my space (laughs) that is how (laughs) bad it was and I I can totally relate I can totally relate so yeah so we'll find a picture and, and put it up there for you but um but yeah I I think so too All right. Well, I think we have covered a lot of misconceptions today. I feel like we could probably keep going on and on, but we do want to keep this under an hour. (laughs) Hopefully we've dispelled some misconceptions in a way that make morning time a little more doable for you and a little more real for you. But I, I think the biggest thing I want to leave everyone with is, you know, how many years have you been doing morning time, Dawn? Uh, this is probably our 16th year. We started with circle time and calendars when my oldest was three and she'll yeah. be 19 soon. And I think, uh, for us, this is year 11, 11 mm-hmm. or 12 that we've been doing morning time. And then what about for you, Meg? About eight and a half. So, yeah. So yeah. with everything we've talked about today, it's obviously still got to be worth it. You know? Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. There's, I wouldn't I'll put say- it back. Yeah, I'll say this. We had we had a period where um because we've had we've had all sorts of weird life things happen over the years. And um and we've had times where we took a break from morning time. And it was like when I did like end of the year interviews with my kids, it was the number one thing. Like, I miss morning time. When do we get to do morning time again? You know, and um, you know, because I had that moment where I was like, maybe this isn't working, you know, because all this life stuff is going on, whether it was move or whatever. And, um, and it, it proved to be the thing that was most valuable to my children. I love it. I love it. Well, that's a great place to end. So if you would like any of the resources that uh, the ladies and I chatted about today, we're going to have to wrangle all of those up for you because I know we mentioned a few. We're going to put them in the show notes um, for this episode of the podcast. And you'll find that at pambarnhill.com slash YMB141. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me. This was fun. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun. Thanks so much for listening to Your Morning Basket. If you are ready to spend less time planning and more time engaged in learning with your children, join Your Morning Basket Plus, a monthly membership with everything you need to start a morning time practice in your homeschool. To join, head on over to ymbplus.com and I'll see you there.